Okay, so in today's video, I wanna talk about the effects of fatigue on endurance athletes and how you can actually lower the effect of fatigue. Uh, the reason why I'm talking about that is because I'm currently reading this book, Hell on Two Wheels, which is a book basically about the race across America, the bike race, and it's considered by some as the toughest endurance event because there is uh, checkpoints that they have to reach. Um, and on average, you have to bike for 21 hours a day just to make the checkpoints. And the winners often will just keep biking without sleep altogether. So it's a pretty interesting book. Uh, it's a 2011 book, but what got me on the topic of fatigue is in the book, one of the cyclists uses a uh, cause, cognitive distraction. And um, so I got some notes here. But yeah, so one of the cyclists uses cosmic distraction and disassociation to lower the fatigue while he's running. So in his case, what he does is uh, while they're going through the desert, uh, this cyclist continually put a bunch of oil all over his open skin. And that gave him a cooling effect because while he was training for the race beforehand, he continually put this, co uh, this oil on, all over his skin and told himself that it was cold, that it was cool, that he felt really cold while he put it on. And he did it so many times that while he was in the race, even though he was in the desert, he felt that cooling sensation all over again. Another thing he did was he, while he was feeling this pain, the fatigue was starting to wear in, he would start to start wiggling his big toes and he would focus 100% on wiggling his big toes and also tapping his hand on the handlebar as he was biking. And uh, these three things actually lowered his fatigue. So. It got me started thinking about all this and I wanted to find out why that was. So I went into uh, some of the studies about these types of things and what it does basically is these things associate with something called the gate control model. So the gate control model essentially uh, states that there's two different levels of central nerve, uh, not central nervous systems, but nerves through the body. There's the pain nerves and there's also movement nerves essentially. So the pain nerves move at a slower speed than your moving nerves. So an example I found online was uh, if you were to bite on your lip and you were to bite on it, say out of five out of 10, you had some pretty good pain. And then all of a sudden uh, you were told to shake your hand really hard. You would all of a sudden not feel the biting pain on your lip anymore because your body would jump to moving your hand and it could only focus on that. So it's like uh, you can basically distract yourself from having pain. So it's pretty interesting stuff. Um, and that's exactly what this guy was doing. He actually had a psychologist with him that was uh, teaching him these things for many months up until this race. So the gate control model, that's essentially what it does. And there was another psychologist that took it a little further and he took this gate control model and he made it specifically for endurance athletes, athletes in general, and it's called the central governor for sports. And it is where the fatigue is adjusted by past experience, immediate goals, conscious sensation of fatigue, current exertion level, and metabolic rate. So what that means is it takes into consideration all of these things. Now, up until this point, People just assume that fatigue was just a physical thing. So if you became more physically fit, you would be able to fight off fatigue better. And that was the only thing. But now this central governing uh, system says that it takes into consideration all of these things, your past experience, your immediate goals right now, your conscious sensation to the fatigue. So that's where that whole distraction thing comes in, where you can tap your handlebars if you're a cyclist and distract yourself from the pain. And uh, your current exertion level so that's just basically how, how how bad it feels for you right now so obviously a four out of ten for example exertion level for me would be um, a lot higher exertion level for someone that has never trained before so that's probably where you're gonna feel your uh, the fitness come in your current exertion level because as you get more fit your exertion level will go down but it takes into consideration all of these things so the psychologist that uh, uh, basically made this up said fatigue isn't a physical event but rather a sensation that is in your conscious process of all of these events so if you can somehow try to lower any one of those things your feeling of fatigue will go down so uh, another example of that is tricking yourself into when the finish line is so a, even a better example is if you think about take, take weightlifting for example 
your body will only use the amount of muscle fibers that it needs, that it thinks it needs to get the job done. So say you're going to lift 100 pounds up and your brain knows how much 100 pounds is. You've been lifting weights for a long time. You go to grab it and then all of a sudden, as you go to lift it, turns out you grabbed the wrong weights and it was only 50 pounds. You will actually end up lifting it really fast because your body was prepared and braced for the 100 pounds to lift, but it only had to do 50. Now, flip that over and if you only had the actual 50 pounds and you knew it was 50 pounds, you still would have lifted it really slowly because your body would have only recruited the muscle fibers that were actually needed. So that's exactly the same thing that's gonna happen in a race. If you have this many kilometers left in a race or whatever, your body's only gonna recruit the required amount of muscle fibers that it needs. But as you get closer and closer to the finish line, say you're in the final finishing shoot and you have to pass a person, all of a sudden your body is able to recruit all of the muscle fibers that it needs. You can go into a full sprint and pass that person. Even though say, five kilometers early in the race, there's no way maybe you could have, you would have thought you could do that. You, just the thought of you trying to recruit muscle fibers to sprint was not believable, but later in the race, your mind just allows you to do it. So you almost have to realize that your mind is trying to hold back effort, muscle fibers, everything from you all the time, trying to preserve itself and keep it strong and if you can tap into that, you're going to be able to go much further and much faster. So there are some other tactics that you can use that I have up here that can allow you to tap into it as well as these distraction things. Uh, some of them, so before a race or before a run, you can make sure you get a lot of sleep, which will allow you to have more willpower. It's going to allow you to push yourself a little further. If you're sleep deprived, your, uh, your ability to push yourself and exert yourself is much lower. So make sure you're well rested. Um, make sure you eat a carbohydrate or you're at least glycogen, your glycogen stores are topped up before your workout. So eating high carbohydrate foods like bananas or things like that beforehand, you know, maybe an hour before are definitely really good for, uh, for allowing you to push yourself properly in your workouts or your races. And, uh, caffeine is also shown to increase your ability to warn off fatigue and, uh, even music on top of that. So if you find music that really fires you up, or maybe even watching a motivational video before you go to work out, something that's gonna get you either angry or excited. Those are the two emotions that they've found that will actually help you uh, push through fatigue a little better. And then while you're actually doing the workout or the runs, something you can do is listen to music again, preferably something that it, it invokes anger or excitement. So obviously something that you like, not someone else's playlist, but your playlist, for example. Um, what else is there? Oh, sometimes just that ability to tell yourself that the race isn't quite as long as it is. So if you're in a race that's 10 kilometers long, if you can really focus in on just one kilometer at a time, you're, you're going to be able to, to almost trick your brain into recruiting more muscle fibers for those kilometer trunk, chunks every time instead of focusing on the race as one whole. That's why you'll always uh, talk, well, that's why you'll always hear about people talking about breaking the race into chunks, it actually helps you uh, push through fatigue a little bit better. And uh, I believe there's one more here. Let's see here. Yeah, so um, pretty much, and obviously uh, making sure you're like properly warmed up and stuff like that, that seems like a little like weird that that's going to help you push through fatigue but if your body's like specifically primed up for the exercise it's not going to feel that you're not going to feel that jolt of like like almost freaking out your body freaking out and that heart rate spike when you first have to start a race or a workout so being properly primed up for the workout is going to help you ward off fatigue later on and also trying to stay cool so uh You'll often see like pro racers and stuff just splashing water all over their body trying to keep their core temperature down. Uh, you're going to be able to push through fatigue more if your core temperature is as cold as possible. So obviously as you keep working out, your core temperature is going to keep going up. So you got to really try to monitor that and try to keep it as cool as possible. So those are some tips about how to push you or push yourself through fatigue in endurance sports, all endurance sports. Hopefully these can help you out and you'll be able to push further, faster, longer, whatever you're going after. Uh, thanks a lot for watching and keep going after those goals.